Hey gang, it is February 10th on a wintry day. And we are back at Rose Hill Cemetery. Rose Hill was my third ever video seven months ago in the summer of 2020. A very old cemetery here in Chicago. Coming through the gates to see a very tragic family. And we're in. Beautiful snowy day here in Chicago at Rose Hill. We're here today to see the grave of the Hippich family. Very, very tragic story. I don't know if this was the unluckiest family that I've ever heard of, or perhaps this family had a curse, as we'll hear at the end. But I'm going to tell you a story of some really terrible things that happened to this family. Come on along, let's go check out their grave. The Hippich family lived way back in the early part of the 19th, 1900s. And it was Lewis who owned a big glass company with a partner who married a woman named Ida. It was Ida Sophia Fisher who married Louis Hippich. Louis was the wealthy co-owner of the Tyler and Hippich Company, which was a plate glass dealer in Chicago. They had four children, Robert, Archibald, Gertrude, who went by Jean and Howard. Three boys and a girl. On December 30th, 1903, Robert and his younger brother, Archie, went to attend the play at the Iroquois Theater. And you all know what happened. Many of you know what happened there. Well, if you're from Chicago, they went to see a performance of Mr. Bluebird. And it was during that performance of that play that that faulty light caused the theater to be engulfed in flames, killing over 600 innocent people, mostly women and young children. And sadly, Robert and Archie were among those who lost their lives. Sadly, this was just the start of their misfortune. The mother, Ida was inconsolable. And she decided finally to go on a trip to Europe with Jean, her daughter, to help relieve some of the depression. So they go to Europe. They end up in Cherbourg, France, and that's where they decided to buy two first-class tickets to, on the guess what, the Titanic. Yes. How unfortunate is that? So we all know what happened with the Titanic. And the good news is, if there's any good news, well, there's good news. They, they did survive down in the lifeboats. It was a whole harrowing story. Of course, we all know about that. On August 29th, 1914, Jean was a passenger in a vehicle driven by a guy named Hugo Carlson. 
Now, Hugo and Jean, they were driving down Lakeshore Drive here, and if you're from Chicago or if you're not, Lakeshore Drive basically runs along the city on the lake. It's a beautiful lakeshore, open to the public. And sadly, they hit a boy named John Dredling while his father, mother, and four siblings watched. I mean, it's not funny. I'm just like, oh my gosh. Carlson jumps out of the vehicle to help. And while he's trying to console the family and do his thing, somebody sneaks over to the car and steals his briefcase. It's a little footnote to that terrible story. Exactly two months later, on October 29th, their only remaining son, Howard, gets killed in an auto crash in Lake Geneva, which is northwest of here in Wisconsin. He was, he was only 19. And if that's not bad enough, Mr. Hippock's glass company, Tyler and Hippock, was bombed by a radical labor group back in 1922. And in, the, uh, and in 1926, following that, George Linton, who was an employee, was robbed at gunpoint by three assailants, and they made off with five grand in the company payroll. So it doesn't stop there. Jean, the daughter, she gets married, gets divorced, and then her second husband, she's finally settled in, in love. It's permanent. And shortly after the end of World War II, he kills himself. Just unbelievable. This is the Hipbotch family plot right here. I'm not going to walk over there through this deep snow. I'm on the road. And I'm going to tell you, this sphere that's on top of solid granite, and I'm going to zoom in on it, has got to be north of 36 inches in diameter. This thing is massive. That's, uh, that is a massive sphere. It's a beautiful monument to the family, and they are all laid to rest here, right beneath the uh, snow, of course. Uh, they all have their own stones. I found a picture on Find a Grave that has a picture in the summer and I'm going to try and get the exact, I think I remember the angle. It was about right here. And as I recall, right in the center is Lewis. To his left is Ida. And towards us, down from Ida, is Jean. And going back to Lewis in the middle, to the right are the boys, the three boys. So they're, they're all here. So we won't be able to see their stones because they're buried in the snow. But here's where the story gets really crazy, in my mind. And that's why it, 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 it probably all well could be a curse. Because they supplied, their glass company supplied glass to a very infamous character in Chicago. And it was the World's Fair, The Devil in the White City, H.H. Holmes. The madman who had the hotel and his guests would disappear, and he had secret passageways, and I think he gassed them and put, knocked them out, and he had vertical and horizontal passages down to the basement, which was a dissection lab and how to get rid of the bodies. It was just, I mean, that's a whole story. I mean, a lot of you probably know about that guy. Well, all the glass to his hotel was supplied by Hippoch's company. And in typical Holmesian fashion, he didn't pay. He didn't want to pay his bill. So they sued him. And you know what? They also put a lien on his building. And they gave Holmes a lot of trouble. So you just have to wonder, was that a curse? Could have been. But here we are. We'll pay our respects to the Hippach family and we hope they are resting in peace. It's sad what they had to go through. So hopefully now they're all together reunited in paradise. <laughs>